which European monarchies might be abolished? For hundreds of years, monarchs dominated nearly every corner of Europe and the world. But in the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, common people began to question why one person had the right to rule over them simply because their great-great-great-grandfather was the mightiest warrior or biggest gangster in the country. Numerous revolutions and beheadings ensued. Today, only 10 hereditary monarchies endure in Europe. And while the royals live in the palaces and ride in the carriages of their totalitarian ancestors, their relevance in the modern world is frequently called into question. Without feudalism and an iron grip on the populace, these monarchies survive primarily on the good grace of their people. Some royal families are idolized, some are lampooned, and some are downright loathed. I already covered the five monarchies least likely to be abolished, but today let's take a look at the five royal families most likely to get the boot from their people. We will continue assessing them on a 12-point system, two points each for popularity and likability of the current and future monarchs, popularity and likability of the larger royal family, the cost of the royal family to taxpayers, and historic significance of the monarchy three points for the happiness of the people, and one point for the political roadblocks in the way of abolishing the monarchy. Let's dive in at number five, Monaco. Monaco is ruled by Prince Albert II, who is not especially likable. He was a notorious playboy, frequently appearing in tabloids with a variety of models and actresses. He fathered at least two illegitimate children, which he refused to acknowledge for several years, despite an embarrassing public scene, and he was also sued for paternity by a porn star. In 2011, the 53-year-old prince married 33-year-old South African Olympic swimmer Charlene Whitstock. There were rumors that Charlene tried to flee the country days before the wedding, but was followed by Albert, who confiscated her passport and convinced her to stay. Many noted the tears in her eyes during the elaborate wedding. The couple have since attempted to cultivate a Will and Kate-like love story and popularity, which appears rather transparent, as they come across as wooden and uncharismatic. They have twins, Gabriella and Jacques, born in 2014, and the younger of the two, Jacques, is heir. He may grow to be more likable than his father, but it's too soon to tell. Grace Kelly's other two children, Princess Caroline and Princess Stephanie, have both had scandals in their personal lives. Caroline has had multiple marriages and affairs and is currently married to Prince Ernst August, the ne'er-do-well would-be king of the defunct monarchy of Hanover. Stephanie has had a career in music and fashion that she probably would not have achieved were she not a princess. The one comment I received from Monaco shared faith in the throne, but not much about the man who sits upon it. The $54 million they take in each year is second only to the British royals, but divided between their 38,000 subjects, that's a whopping $1,386 per person per year, by far the most expensive royal family per capita. But despite their lack of charisma and sky-high price tag, the people of Monaco are fiercely loyal to their royals. One point for the devotion to Albert, no points for the family, and no points for their cost. Their people's devotion likely comes down to the fact that the ultra-wealthy micronation would not exist without the Grimaldi family, who have ruled it since Lord Rainier I conquered the Rock of Monaco in 1297. According to the Treaty of Versailles, if Monaco should ever cease to be ruled by a Grimaldi, it would revert back to France and have to share its significant revenue with a much larger population. Thus, the Monaguese are very vested in remaining independent. Full marks for historic significance. 
While they aren't ranked in the happiness report, the nation has the highest GDP per capita in the world at $185,000 per person, and the beautiful city on the French Riviera is called the Billionaire's Playground, so they're doing fine. But there may be a few problems in the future. The wealthy jet-setters that American movie star Grace Kelly attracted in the 1960s haven't been convincing their grandchildren to stay. Monaco has the oldest population in the world, with an average age of 51 years old. And without young people working and paying taxes, the micronation could have serious problems down the road. Prince Albert has made it his mission to attract more young people to move to Monaco, but with a sky-high cost of living and a low freedom score, he has an uphill slog. Two points. Freedom House gives Monaco the lowest score of the European monarchies, at only 83, and the prince has a good deal of political power with the right to propose and veto laws. So even if the Montagues wanted to get rid of the monarchy, they'd have a hard time doing it. That's one point in the royals' favor. With a final score of 6 out of 12, the monarchy doesn't look too hot, but unless laws are changed to allow Monaco to exist without its royals, I'd bet on their survival. Number 4. The Netherlands King Willem Alexander is relatively liked by his people. He caused controversy with his choice of wife, Maxima Zorigieta, because her father had been part of a military dictatorship in her native Argentina. Heir to the throne, Princess Caterina Amalia and the rest of the royal family are seen as semi-down-to-earth, and the three princesses all attend regular school. The family's popularity has fallen recently with a few blunders, including a summer trip they took to Greece, while the rest of their country was on lockdown because of COVID-19. The king's public approval rating fell to 57% and is even lower among younger people. The biggest complaint against them is their cost to taxpayers. Princess Katerina Amalia will begin receiving $1.5 million a year when she turns 18 in December 2021. Comedian Arjen Lubach satirized the monarchy, proclaiming himself Pharaoh of the Netherlands, and many protests of the royals have been active on social media. In 2020, the Dutch government finally decriminalized offending members of the royal house. The Dutch people enjoy a national holiday on King Willem Alexander's birthday, April 30th, and the family is viewed with a sports team-like national pride, but not that much personal adoration. The comments I received reflect this, with an even split of positive, neutral, and negative comments. One point for the monarch and two for his family. The Dutch royals are fourth most expensive at $49 million and $2.90 per citizen. No points there. The monarchy was established in 1581 when William the Silent revolted against the Spanish Habsburgs. His descendants' royal titles and the territory they've ruled have changed many times over the years. In the 1790s, Willem V, Prince of Orange, was exiled, and though he demanded his throne back, the people declined. His son was later welcomed back and made King Willem I of the Netherlands. One point for historic significance. The Netherlands is ranked 5th in happiness, but only 13th in GDP, two points. And while there are people who feel strongly about abolishing the monarchy, unless they make a few more serious blunders, most are apathetic about their continued reign. But with a Freedom House score of 98 and a final score of 6 out of 12, the Dutch certainly could boot the royals if they wanted to. Number 3. Belgium King Philippe of the Belgians is pretty likable and popular, as is his wife, Queen Mathilde, and their heir, Princess Elizabeth, who started at the Belgian Military Academy in 2020. All three have made efforts to modernize the monarchy and endear themselves to the people, including speaking the nation's three languages, Dutch, French, and German. Philippe's father, King Albert II, who retired in 2013, has caused a bit more scandal. 
he had an 18-year affair with a Belgian baroness, from which a daughter was born. Delphine recently sued her father for proof of paternity and is now legally a princess. Only 59% of the Belgian people view the monarchy favorably, more out of dislike for the system than the royals themselves. And my Belgian viewers feel the same. Two points for Philippe and Elizabeth, one point for the rest of the family. They are among the least expensive monarchies at only 15 million total, $1.30 per person, so they pick up two points there. The real problems are viewed when you zoom out from the current royals. The monarchy is the youngest in Europe, established in 1831, when Belgium revolted against the Netherlands and gained independence. There have only been seven Belgian kings, and one of them, Leopold II, is personally responsible for the Congo Free State. He held the African territory as a personal possession and extracted a fortune in ivory and rubber through a system of brutality which enslaved, mutilated, and murdered millions of Congolese people. The term crimes against humanity was coined to describe the situation. His successor ended these abhorrent practices, but they left a stain on the royal family that the Belgian people have not forgotten. While many European countries have shameful colonial pasts, the Congo Free State is more brutal, more recent, and tied directly to the monarchy rather than the larger government. King Philippe recently surprised the world with a heartfelt apology to the Congo for the acts of his ancestor, but his monarchy still gets no points for historic significance. Belgium is ranked 20th in both happiness and GDP, and there are serious problems which might spell the end of the nation, not just the monarchy. The two halves of Belgium have long been at odds. The Dutch-speaking region of Flanders is more conservative, religious, and shows more support for the monarchy, while the French-speaking and more liberal Wallonia does not. The economic hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic have renewed calls for Belgium's division into two new countries. The monarchy is seen as a bridge between the sides keeping the nation together, but it might not hold. No points for happiness, and with a freedom score of 96 and a final score of 5 out of 12, the Belgians may soon decide to call it quits on the monarchy and the whole country, no matter how much they may like the man who currently wears the crown. Number 2. The United Kingdom and the Commonwealth Queen Elizabeth II came in on the coattails of her parents' World War II winning popularity. And while she has faced numerous personal criticisms during her 69-year reign, she remains fairly popular, with an approval rating of 69%, the highest in her family. At least it was at the end of 2020. In February 2021, The Guardian broke the news that the Queen and Prince Charles have been using a legal loophole called Royal Consent to prevent more than 1,000 bills from being voted on in Parliament. They have been especially concerned with bills that would affect the monarchy or them personally, and the Queen lobbied to keep her embarrassing personal wealth hidden from the public. The revelation of political meddling by a monarch who has long been renowned and respected for staying out of politics has renewed calls to abolish the British monarchy. Even less loved is Elizabeth's son and heir, Prince Charles, who will likely inherit the throne soon from his 95-year-old mother. Charles only receives a 40% vote of confidence. He and his wife, Camilla, have been loathed by many since they had an affair behind the back of Charles's wife, the beloved Princess Diana. Charles is seen as a posh and out-of-touch bore, and there are fears that while his mother always remained gracefully above politics, at least publicly, as is required by the Constitution, Charles will be unable to hold his tongue on controversial issues. In 2020, he tied himself to the highly lauded Great Reset, which was idealistic, but again, out of touch with the realities of the world. 
if the monarchy can survive Charles's tenure, or if his mother outlives him, the crown will likely be safer on Prince William's head. He and his wife Catherine have 61% and 59% approval. They are seen as far more in touch with the people, and their glamour and charm gain them a lot of admiration. Hit Netflix drama The Crown depicts the Queen, Prince Charles, and other royals in a far from ideal light. The British government requested that a disclaimer be added to make it clear that the show is a work of fiction, which Netflix declined. But even keeping in mind that the show fills in the gaps in history with fabricated private conversations and scenes, it doesn't bode well for the public's view of the family. The British royals have been scandal magnets for decades. The Queen's second son, Prince Andrew, has been all but cut out of the family for his involvement with sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein and for allegedly sleeping with underage girls. And Charles's second son, Harry, and his wife, Meghan, have brought down not undue controversy with their allegations of mistreatment and racism. Other members of the family are resented for the taxpayer money they siphon off or viewed with indifference, but few are especially beloved. The many comments I received about the British royals bear this out, with nearly even positive and negative quotes and a majority on the fence. The Queen and Prince William earn one point for the monarchy. The rest of the royal family let down the side. The British royals are by far the most expensive in Europe, at $107 million a year, but with a large population that only comes to $1.60 per person. 15 adults and 3 children are full-time royals and take public funds, far more than any other royal house. There are frequent questions about why so many royals don't get jobs of their own. No points for their exorbitant price tag. The English monarchy dates back to King Ethelstan in 925, but they have fallen before. In 1215, King John was forced to sign the Magna Carta, the first constitution which limited his rule and gave power to his barons. In 1649, civil war brought down the monarchy, and King Charles I was beheaded by his people. His son, Charles II, was invited back a decade later, but his niece, Mary II, was offered the crown only if she would agree to a constitution which would make Parliament the real power in the country. This limit to royal power is likely what saved the British monarchy while other crowned heads were getting chopped off all over Europe in the following centuries. But as the people of Britain have abolished their monarchy before, there is a sense that they could choose to do it again. One point for historic significance. And it's not just the citizens of the UK who call the Queen their head of state. Elizabeth is also sovereign of the 54 former British colonies which make up the Commonwealth of Nations. Barbados announced in September 2020 that they will remove the Queen as their head of state and leave their colonial past behind. Other nations, Australia in particular, have a lot of support to leave the Commonwealth and cut ties with the British monarchy, especially in the wake of Meghan Markle's accusations of racism within the royal family. But even if the Commonwealth does fall apart, the monarchy would still survive. What might end it is unrest in the UK. Brexit, political anxiety, and the inequality of a government based on heredity have made the monarchy especially unpopular of late. With happiness ranked 17th and GDP ranked 23rd, the second lowest on the list, at a freedom score of 93, the balance has the potential to tip in favor of abolishment. Nothing seems likely to happen while Queen Elizabeth is still alive, but it remains to be seen if King Charles III will make the United Kingdom decide to change its name. And the number one most likely to be abolished is Spain. 
the current king, Philippe VI, is seen as a significant improvement on his father, Juan Carlos, who was forced to abdicate in order to save the Spanish monarchy in 2014. He and other members of the royal family were embroiled in scandal over their use of public funds, corruption, and an elephant hunting trip Juan Carlos took during a financial crisis. The former king recently fled the country and now lives in an undisclosed location to avoid facing prosecution over his shady business dealings in the Middle East. Optimism was high for Philippe's reign upon his ascension, and he has taken steps to modernize the monarchy. He has visited every country in Latin America, received LGBTQ organizations at the palace, downplayed the role of Catholicism in government, and cut his own salary during the recession. But he has also made controversial statements about Catalan independence and other issues, and has lost a good deal of public support. His heir, Leonor, born in 2005, is well-liked, but it's too early to tell if she will be able to right the foundering ship, and she may not get the chance to try. A 2020 poll said that 34% of Spaniards support the monarchy, while 48% want a referendum vote on abolishing it. Viewers' comments reflect an either neutral or negative view of the Spanish royals. One point for Philippe and Leonor, but Juan Carlos blew the royal family's points out of the water. Two points are saved as Spain is one of the cheapest monarchies at only $9 million total, 20 cents per person. While the Spanish monarchy dates back to 1474 when power couple Queen Isabel of Castile and King Fernando of Aragon united their realms. They lose all their points for historic significance because they were abolished in recent memory. Alfonso XIII was forced out of the country in 1931. After the Spanish Civil War, General Francisco Franco became dictator. He had no sons, so chose Alfonso's grandson, Juan Carlos, to become his heir, and he re-established the monarchy in 1975. So many living Spaniards remember a time without a monarchy. Spain is ranked 27th in happiness and 33 in GDP per capita, both the lowest ranks on our list. And with high unemployment and unrest in the nation, Spaniards are looking for a change to the system. No points for happiness, but one point towards the monarchy sticking around, because with a freedom score of 90 and a high degree of corruption, that change may be difficult to facilitate. With a final score of 4 out of 12, the Spanish monarchy is the most at risk of being abolished. So what do you think are the likely futures of the monarchies of Europe? Will the royals' likability and benefits to their country keep their crowns intact, or will monarchy become a thing of the past? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.